Uh, yeah, madam, we can proceed. Hello, dear masters. A hearty welcome to you all to the day nine of 21 day digital Dhyan Swadhyay Yoga presented by PSSM Global, a wonderful platform on which masters across the globe have been sharing great wisdom with, you, with us all. My humble pranams to Brahmarshi Pitamaha Subhash Patriji. It's my privilege to introduce today's guest speaker to you all, Brahma Vidvanmani Saroja Gullapalli. Saroja Gullapalli is an engineer and a former senior corporate professional from an MNC in Melbourne, Australia. She is the founder of Saroja's self-empowerment platform. She is also an award-winning motivational speaker, holistic counselor, and author of the book, The Red Rose, inspired by Brahmashi Pitamaha Patriji. She received the Victorian Multicultural Award for Excellence from Australian government in recognition of her meritorious service to the community. She was the chairperson at the fifth international conference on integrating spirituality and holistic living in organizational leadership in 2015 in Chicago. She has been doing community work for the last 15 years under the umbrella of Saroja Semp Empowerment Platform. As part of her community work, she has conducted over 100 workshops and sessions in Australia and abroad in the last 10 years. She has numerous support groups running all around the globe. Many people are immensely benefiting from this platform. Her vision is to build a community with individuals who believe in themselves and have miraculous thinking that aids in overall growth of humanity. And her mission in life is to live in the present with complete awareness because the whole life exists only in this moment. Without further delay, let me welcome Saroja Madam, who is joining us today from Melbourne, Australia, to share wisdom on the topic, Principles of Creation. Hearty welcome, Madam. Thank you, Swapna. So very excited. Happy, very happy and blessed to connect with you on this platform. The stage is all yours. Thank you, dearest Swapna. I'm so excited that you are the host of today's session. And it's such a privilege to have such a great soul like you bringing me onto this platform. And I'm very grateful to the universe for that, Swapna. Thank you very much. So my dear friends, masters, and gods of the universe who are all watching this great digital Swadhyaya yoga program. Thanks to PMC Global and Digital Swadhyaya Yoga Session in India. Thanks for giving me this opportunity today on this day to share the wisdom from one of my favorite books in my life. My dear masters, this is a book that changed my life. So before I start talking about this book, I would like to start this session by paying my tribute to Brahmarshi Pitamaha Patrisar and to all the viewers who are connected to me through this platform and to all their energies. Thank you. My dear masters, this great book came into my life when I had just stepped on to the path of spirituality in 2002. This is one of my favorite books. And this is what the book looks like. It's called Omni Reveals the Four Principles of Creation by John L. Payne Master. I have talked so much about this book and the connection I have with this book in my 10 hours marathon interview with Anand a few months back. So people who would have heard my interview with Anand would know what kind of passion I have for this book. So my dear masters, just by holding this book, I cannot explain how much energy that comes through this book to me every time. So let's talk a little bit about the author. John L. Payne Master, my tribute to him for giving me this book when I needed it the most. John Payne is a gifted and internationally known trans channel and metaphysical teacher who studied light body with Sanaya Roman. You all know the name Sanaya Roman, the book Spiritual Growth 
being your higher self. So they both did work together some years ago. He now travels the globe offering workshops and lecturing in Germany, the United States, South Africa, Scandinavia, Croatia, Netherlands, and the list goes on. John Payne is well known on the internet, having a prominent position on the spirit web. This is the web's largest new age site. He has also written articles for several US-based metaphysical journals, such as the Sedona Journal of Emergence, Horizons, and the Oraran. He's a regular contributor to Namaste Magazine from South Africa. My dear friends, as per John Payne, this book birthed as a result of his six years of traveling and channeling. His adventures started back in 1992 when he visited a hypnotherapist for some help. He wanted to quit smoking, of course, which he did after the session. So John Payne says, after my first hypnosis, my psychic ability suddenly awakened, culminating out of body experience. And then I became aware of things that I had previously not noticed. So then one day in January, 1991, a wonderful book came into his life by chance. And this opening, this book was opening to channeling by Sanaya Roman and Duane Packer. It changed his life. And then he went to study light body further. His work has taken him to so many continents, friends, that I have shared with you. Each country that he has visited has taught him unique lessons and has expanded his ability as a teacher. This book, written by John L. Payne, Omni Reveals the Principles of Creation, is a very great way of presenting a book. In this book, you will see the whole discussion and wisdom given to us in form of questions and answers by Omni. So it's such an interesting book. Just when you start reading the book and you might have read just a couple of pages and then suddenly you feel you have a question, but the moment you turn the page, that question would be there on the next page. This is an amazing book, my friend. And all throughout my journey with this book, I thought as if Omni was reading my mind and presenting questions or the readers had read my mind and presenting questions to Omni and the answers were just in front of me. So this book that we have today is a kind of question and answer format of a book. An inspiring and compelling collection of questions and answers were posed to Omni, which is a non-physical group entity channeled through John Payne. Omni, is primarily concerned with communicating the four principles of creation that I'm going to talk about it today, all centering around the idea that the creative aspect of the universe is a natural part of our being. The omni material, it offers such candid answers, uplifting and inspiring answers to questions, all the phase in life, it talks about abortion, sexuality, suicide, money, health, personal development, decision-making, you name it, any challenge we have in life, it has been covered in that book. The all-encompassing message that Omni relates is that one message that comes so clearly out of this book is all is okay with humanity. We are evolving and we are evolving and will continue to be okay as we gently unfold our potential. So the question is, my dear masters, what is Omni or who is Omni? And Omni has really come out a very good way of telling us through this book, who is Omni? So if we try to understand the different planes, if we take out the physical plane, because we know that very well, there are three non-physical dimensions, my dear masters, astral, mental, and spiritual. And then the spiritual can be further divided into higher mental, highest mental, which all deals with Christ and Buddha consciousness and further on. Beyond and within those spiritual dimensions, we have multidimensional realities. So this particular planes that we are talking about, they are, as you keep going up to the spiritual plane, there are multidimensional realities coming up more and more. In this realm, Omni says, 
we do not act as individuals, but we act as a group or consensus reality. It means that the omni-channeling is just not one particular entity channeling, but it is the channeling of a group consciousness. And in that group, they're bonded to one another mentally and emotionally. Omni says, we know each other's every thought in that group, idea, aspiration, every experience. This may sound very odd to you humans, even frightening to you, or even appear as an invasion of privacy. But we have no concept of privacy, for privacy exists only where shame resides. That's true, masters. When do we need privacy? When you don't want your details to come out, where shame resides. And Omni says, we have nothing to hide and seek. So we seek not to hide anything. We do have a kind of etiquette in which we seek permission to share totally in another's experience. This is rarely ever denied, but one of our number may choose to create an experience that is more solitary. Although we are a group consciousness and this group consciousness of Omni is made up of 343 individual multidimensional beings. And Omni says, we have the ability to appear to you as if we are one. So if your eyes could pierce the veil that separates you from the non-physical world, you would see for the most part, a handsome being, if you, because we all want to see some kind of a form of Omni. So he's saying, or this group consciousness is saying, if only you could pierce the veil that separates the physical and the other planes, then you would see us like approximately a 10 feet tall, clothed in long white robes with a very bright light emanating from our chest and forehead areas. We speak to you as one with one unified voice and one unified consciousness. And we consider us to be omni. My dear masters, this particular concept is so apt for the current time. The ascension that we are going on the planet or the planet is going through an ascension as we all know. And one thing that's coming forward again and again is not individual consciousness. If you want to evolve, if you want to grow, then you have to grow as a group consciousness. And that's how beautifully Omni explained us through this book as to what Omni is. So at the beginning of the book, John Payne, through his other readers or through the other participants in this channeling, asks some very valid questions. So they're asking Omni, what is your interest in Earth? And why are you speaking to us? Why at this time have you come to us? And the answer was, it is our intention. This is what Omni is saying, that it is our intention to impart knowledge to all those who seek so that they may be assisted in shifting their focus towards that which is increasingly joyful and pleasing to them. Our intent to impart information and your intent to receive information has created a vibrational match. My dear masters, focus on this, what Omni is saying. It means that if you're asking for something, there are always light beings who are always ready to give us that information. And through this discussion or through this conversation, Omni is clearly saying to John Payne that you were vibrating at a frequency that you wanted this information and we were ready to give you that information. So there was a vibration match and hence the channeling. What a beautiful way of saying that when you are ready for information, information will flow through to you. And Omni says, we have a common purpose and our common purpose has brought us together. And it says, your planet is in the middle of an evolutionary shift towards unity consciousness. See masters, that's what I was saying. From individual consciousness, we are slowly going towards group consciousness. And that's what Omni is saying. Our planet is going through this evolutionary shift towards unity consciousness. Omni says, as you shift your focus towards the experiencing of unity consciousness, you automatically draw our attention to yourself. Every word makes perfect sense now, masters. This book was written in 2001. 
that is when the ascension was just beginning to be expressed in books. Cast your eyes 18 years forward, fast forward. We are in the crux of ascension and everything that Omni said almost 18 years back, you can really feel a connection now because now you understand what is the magnitude of evolution that we are going through. Back in 2001, if you would have read this book, you would be wondering, what the hell is Omni trying to tell us? But today, masters, no one will ha have that question. So this is a book rewound to 18 years back. And then Omni says, there have been many predictions made about this time frame, mostly inaccurate in terms of the way in which the change will occur. So as I said, master, this book was written or published in 2001. So at that time, they were still trying to guess at what time this evolution was going to happen in complete or when this ascension was happening. As we all know, there are many time frames. 2012 was one of that. And then after that, now we are in the middle of it. So this is a book 18 years back and this will make you understand what was the channeling information happening at that point of time for the future. And Omni says, we do not foresee gay, great catastrophes and earth changes that will destroy civilization as you know it. Masters, in 2001, there was this prediction that 2012 is coming, which is going to be the end of the earth. There were so many misconceptions. At that time in 2001, Omni is saying there will not be any great catastrophes that will destroy civilization. See, looking back, there is no dis destruction of civilization. In fact, we're happily evolving. So Omni says, what we do see is a rapidly changing political and social landscape as our focus shifts towards this unity consciousness. Some will experience natural disaster for these have also been the tools through which we have chosen to learn. Masters, note the word. It is our choice to learn through disasters and only those people will go through disasters. It's not the case that you are apt to live next to someone for several years before you even know that person's name. Omni says in our observation, when disaster strikes, you're apt to reach out and touch one another. That's what happens, masters. When there is a strife, you want to connect. As this is the manner of your seeking, you may continue to create war, widespread disease, and natural disaster until you choose as a species to achieve what you want without the ingredient of pain. Such a great statement, masters. If we think that we can only evolve through pain and struggle, then this is exactly what we will go through, war, widespread diseases like corona, natural disasters like tsunami. But Omni says pain and struggle are not necessary, but they will remain until you decide that they no longer give you what you want and that you can achieve more without them. Masters, this is a beautiful statement of Omni. We are going through, this earth is going through corona or whatever at this moment, because we as humanity think that we can only evolve as a result of pain and struggle. But Omni is saying it's not necessary. You have to make the decision. It is your choice. And so masters, we on the spiritual path, we know even through the time that the whole world has been struggling with fear in corona times, we have rejoiced this time by connecting with each other, by connecting within, by connecting with Mother Earth, by connecting with nature. Where is the pain and struggle for you and me, masters? This is exactly what Omni has tried to tell us through this book in 2001. So then the question that was asked to Omni was, then do we need to be afraid of this process? Masters minded, this is 2001 and people were very worried about 2012. What's going to happen? Is the world going to end? So most of these fearful questions are coming from that perspective. So the answer to that was, so the question was, do we need to be afraid of this process that we are going to go through? And Omni says, certainly not. It is consciousness, thought that creates circumstance that creates world and destroys them. 
choose to shift your focus freely and with ease and things will happen with free and ease it is as simple as that your mind the you that exists in your head so to speak molds the universal energy with thought in order to create a world in which you can live which we say masters you create your reality omni goes on your world like our world exist within the mind of god and who is god us within our mind it is as real as we want it to be envision joyful expansion into new consciousness and it will be yours so if you go through in your mind that this whole evolution will be a joyful process it will be joyful process assume that the transition into the new world will be challenging and full of disasters that too will be yours it makes no difference what the majority is thinking note this words masters they are great words it makes no difference what the majority is thinking your unique world which is you cannot be touched by anyone else unless you invite them in the same way as you have invited us what omni is saying is what you are thinking is your reality the people around you may be thinking of pain disasters but that's not going to touch you unless you invite them just like you have invited us so omni told us right in the beginning that our vibrations match and hence i'm channeling so we have to be very careful with what vibrations are we matching the universe always delivers unto you that which you focus on such a beautiful way of answering que questions my dear masters my heart really flows with joy any day i read this book the question was okay doesn't matter how we go into this new world but what will this new world look like don't you wonder my dear masters what will this new world after ascension look like and omni says it will look exactly as you choose it to look the shift is taking place because there are new parts of your being that are awakening within you as a species when you send out a request for more understanding of who you are your greater self your soul responded and begins to penetrate your world more deeply emerging further into your day to day consciousness just as we are multidimensional in nature omni is saying just as they are multidimensional so are we omni is repeating you are not non physical in nature so sorry you are non physical in nature and the physical you is an extension of that non physical being so masters we all know we are we always say we are not this body material alone we understand what omni is trying to talk to us so omni is saying we are extension of that non physical being and as we send out our request our non physical part responded by projecting more of itself into us therefore bringing the consciousness that we have been asking so this new world is a result of our request we are the creator of our own reality we even create the expanded consciousness that we are seeking now in this new age so masters what omni is saying is like us you are creators nothing more nothing less your new world will see great harmony between the animal kingdom and humanity and note the next one what omni said my dear masters many teachers will spring forth amongst you to assist you in bridging the gap you have created for yourself amazing masters and today you can see how many teachers have come out of the ordinary public and are trying to help people on different platform this is exactly what omni said in 2001 many teachers will spring forth where will they come from just among you they they are not someone coming from heaven people among you will come forward as teachers to assist you through this gap that you have created between yourself and your consciousness and that will be the beginning of your new world and once you have bridged this gap and have embraced the non humanoid terrestrial being as brothers and sisters what does it mean 
once we start understanding our co-creation, understanding the other animals, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, as brothers and sisters, you will be ready to embrace other forms that exist beyond the earth. So masters, if we want to go beyond this physical reality, first, you have to master this reality by accepting all the other beings as your brothers and sisters. Only then would, have, would you have made the platform to move forward. And the realization of your connection to all life will urge you to assess your treatment of other species. And the best part is masters, you'll begin to experience that what you do in one part of the world affects all other parts of the world. So any change at this time is just not isolated, my dear masters. You change, you're impacting the other parts of the world and vice versa. And what I'm Omni says is, we anticipate that the transformation of the planet will take another 50 to 100 years. You're already moving at breakneck speed and you have evolved more in the past 100 years than you have evolved in last 2000 years. What a statement, my dear masters. What we have evolved in last 2000 years, that much of progress has happened just in the last 100 years. If that is the way this planet is going through ascension, imagine, imagine how quickly we're going to evolve in the next 20 years. Make use of this time, my dear masters. We are all so blessed that we have got this multiple platforms where people are doing amazing work, just like this one, Digital Swadhyaya Yoga. So let's make use of it. And then one question, which is wonderful that's been asked to Omni. The reader asks, you're talking about evolution and change, but what is the purpose of all this? Why are we evolving in the first place? Masters, don't you have this question? Many people won't say it out because, oh, it doesn't look nice if I ask, but we all have it in our hearts. Why are we evolving? Why do we need to evolve in the first place? I had this question, masters, and look at the answer that has come. So Omni says, let us make it clear. You are not evolving in, or, in order to become worthy of your some spiritual hierarchy. You don't have to be on any spiritual hierarchy. You're not here to prove yourself worthy of God. You don't have to prove yourself. No certificate is required. You are here by choice. You have not been placed here, nor have you been obliged to come here. Nobody has asked you to come here. We have come here by choice. What is your purpose for being in the physical state? Very important question. It is simply to master this reality. Umpteen times on my platform, we have discussed this. The one reason why we are here is to master this earth reality, which is one of many. Indeed, we have already mastered many different realities and belief system. This is not the first time that we are trying to master. This is what Omni is saying. My dear masters, you'll be happy to know that we have already done it in different realities and belief system. This is another focus we all have chosen. When we speak of mastering, we speak of creating an experience. What is mastering? Mastering means creating an experience which is joyful and which takes you to ever increasing vibrations. We all know vibrations of joy and love are very high. That's what we want to experience. That's why we are here. This is the driving force of all life, my dear masters. We enter this world for the most part at a low vibration. What does that mean? When we start our journey, our whole birth and life, uh, birth and death cycle, we start at a very low vibration. At this vibration, we are unable to perceive much beyond ourselves or our immediate surroundings. It's all about survival at that low vibration. We can equate ourselves to very primitive people. Survival, physical survival, that's the main thing at that time. As time passes, and we gain more experience within this focus, we broaden our view and begin to see other aspects of this focus. Omni says, you begin to see other objects and how these objects relate not only to you, but also to others with this increasing viewpoint. So this viewpoint keeps getting better and better with every incarnation. We raise our vibration accordingly 
so that this broader perspective can be consciously interpreted this is a game we are we are playing my dear masters it is nothing more than that omni says you are here to see if you can hold the very broadest focus and still remain in the physical mode masters this is a very important statement and i would like to explain this is one of the main things that we all need to remember we are here in the physical body in spite of that every minute we should be aware uh, this is my catch phrase awareness 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 we should be always aware so that we can hold the broadest focus what is the broadest focus that we are that consciousness and yet by choice we have come into this physical body for experience every minute every second this is the thing that we need to remember and that's what omni is saying the very broadest focus at this level of the game is to understand that you are one with all that is that is the broadest focus and this state state of being of winning the game so this game that i'm talking about what is it called spiritual enlightenment and that's what jesus did that's what buddha did that's what our patri sir did and that's what exactly we all are doing masters we all are trying to understand all the time and keep in mind that broadest focus that we are that universal consciousness in this body very 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 important we are not here to get good enough to satisfy anyone else we have chosen to master this game called life part of the game what is this game part of the game is first we forget that it's a game we are playing then we spend uh, time trying to remember the rules because when we start the game nobody tells us the rule nobody tells your body material you're not your soul material no one tells that so it's a very funny game you have to get into the ground start playing game i have said this in my workshops many many times because it's so important and as you start playing the games then with every incarnation then you learn the rules it truly is a fun game my dear masters which is play being played by tens of millions of us so popular is this game called earth nothing is more important than you should have great fun playing this game if this is game my dear masters you should have fun many of you have made hard work of this game and you're not enjoying and what you're doing you are reinventing the rules you have forgotten the rules the purpose of this game is not to please anyone but to be satisfied with your own achievement the primary reason for your soul shifting to this focus is so that it can exist in a state of bliss and unconditional love despite all the evidence the game called earth is a challenging one but it is far from being impossible to win that means the game is challenging but you can win and masters who better than us can tell every day we are trying to learn more so that we can play this game enjoy and bit by bit we are learning the rules of this game so masters i'm going to share some slides from here because there are some amazing concepts and i want you to see that concepts for yourself so let me share this powerpoint as i keep talking in the background so bear with me for one second so masters as i said we are going to talk about omni reveals the four principles of creation that is the john pain uh, book that i was talking about all this while and couple of slides more than couple of slides which i am going to share and i'll try to go at a pace that we can all catch up so the book starts with very very interesting concepts and some of the concepts is is not new but when we talk about the book it's always good to understand where we are starting from so what john pain says is in this book through omni's discussion key laws that govern the universe is law of love and law of attraction so in this book my dear masters the law of love has been explained so beautifully 
So when they talk about the law of love, Omni says that the primary law in this universe is law of love. All things that exist are resting on this law. It is not that love is an action. My dear masters, I have in my workshop, Explore Your Divine Nature. I have explained this in great detail and I just love this topic of love. Love is not an action. It is a state of being. It is also a description of the nature of things and it's a description of the universe itself. The word love has been misinterpreted by, misinterpreted by many and misunderstood. How do you define love? Omni says, we would define love as the complete and total acceptance of what is. Very important. Just accept the things the way they are. That is what love is and allow people to be who they are. That is what love is. So to experience love, the free will comes into picture. And what connection has free will with love? Free will is the natural result of love. So if the whole universe is based on love, that means this universe loves you and hence has given you free will to do whatever you want. You are being of absolute and total free will. Free will is the natural result of love for the love is the total and complete acceptance of whatever it is, the way it is. Masters, love is not an action. We always say, I love you. And we think that we have to do something. There is nothing we have to do, masters. Love is like a magnet. It draws you towards it and it grows within you. Embedded in each one of you, we can best describe in every atom, there is this love. This atom holds within it your will to love. Love is the prime quality of universal consciousness. So there is not a consciousness that does not have this love atom. Your will to love draws you automatically towards the state of love. You cannot deny loving because that's your nature. And this is the game of the universe, my dear masters. We all have got those atoms full of love. That's exactly is the base of the whole universe. The universe seeks to experience itself in love in all its forms. In order to do this, the universe holds within the experience of not love, the experience of darkness. As I always say, masters, if you need to understand love, then you also need to understand what not being loved is. That's called contrast, my dear masters. And the reason we are here on this plane is to understand that contrast. If that universal consciousness is nothing but love, then this is a way of the universal consciousness to understand what love is by understanding what love is not. And you are the one who is part of that universal consciousness who is coming and taking birth here and going through that contrast experience so that when you go back, that experience goes back into the consciousness and consciousness then can feel the contrast and understand what love was. I always give an example. Many people find it very difficult to understand the contrast. If you're always surrounded with tall people and you're a tall person, how will you understand what is tall, what is short? You have to go out of that area and go somewhere else where there are short people. Then you understand what is tallness. Exactly. If you are all love and you have never experienced anything other than love, how would you understand that love, what it is? And that is exactly the truth of our incarnation. We are expression of that consciousness. Come here into this plane so that we can experience everything that is in contrast with who we are not or who we are and take back that experience to the all pervasive consciousness. Masters, though sometimes it could seem very confusing, but if you really understand what this contrast is all about, the whole game is so simple and clear. So this is the highest truth, my dear masters.
everything is love. All actions, all beings, all things are love, for that is the foundation of all the creation. And that's what love is about. And the second universal law, which is law of attraction, we have talked multiple times. The law of attraction, it states that all that is like unto itself will be drawn to it. So whatever vibrations that we are sending out in the universe, we attract more of it. So that's what these two universal laws are about, my dear masters. And then, then we go to the next aspect of this book. So well described about karma. How do we handle karma? So the question here is, what is karma? How does it work? And many have told us that we suffer or pay back in this lifetime for what we did in a past lifetime. So this question was asked to Omni. And what Omni says is, the belief in karma could not be further from the truth. It's not a law designed to punish you or to bring in some kind of a balance. So Omni is saying, we're not trying to punish or this universe is not trying to punish. Many teach that if you abused your wealth in one lifetime, you'll be poor in this one. Or if you murdered someone in one lifetime, you will suffer in next one. This is only true, my dear masters, if you don't change your mind. What Omni means is the universe springs forth from thought and all action is preceded by thought. So before you act, you have a thought and it's a thought that has led one to steal, to abuse or murder. So what are the thoughts of the robber? Clearly this individual does not understand the law of attraction, that does not understand that he or she is God, does not understand the infinite love of God or does not believe in his or her own ability to create wealth. Your experience on earth is not one lifetime after the next. So don't think that every incarnation is an individual one. It is one total physical experience and it is one physical experience that has many forms. Therefore, if you hold the belief in one lifetime that you are unable to create wealth or are not worthy of wealth, then this belief is strong enough to motivate you to steal. Then it is this belief that will follow you into the next episode of physical experience. It's not the deed or action that draws karma to you. It is the belief that led to the deed and the thought behind the deed. Masters, this is so important. It's not the action which is causing karma. It is the thought, it is the belief system that is creating karma. So change your beliefs and you will change your karma. It's such a great message, masters. The more you read behind this, you really start thinking. Actually, this reminds me, the other day I was hosting um, Ray Chandran master who came uh, to talk on this Swadhyay Yoga. I think it was Tuesday. And one of the great things he shared with us was when he was talking about the 10 universal laws that he mentioned, he, he, he definitely mentioned as law of karma one, but the next one he mentioned masters, law of grace. And then uh, we all asked him, Suresh sir and myself, we asked him, what is this law of grace? And you know what he said? There is a council of masters and master Kutumi also was one among them. I remember the name. And he said, at this stage of evolution, we are entitled to ask for grace. What does grace means? That means you can ask for pardon from the council saying, whatever you may be going through, if you're going through some challenge, tell that council that I understand. For something I have done in my past, I'm going through this karma. But now I have learned my lesson. Why does karma, why does that situation come to us to learn something? So if you can tell that counsel that we have learned, then you do not have to go through that situation. Actually, Suresh Master also asked him that question. I also, so remember, this is exactly in line with what it is the belief system and thought that needs to be changed. And once you have changed that masters, you have got the lesson. I love this uh, particular question masters. It is so clear as to, you know, what is causing all this? Because this is what we all need to know. So 
the next question that I, I really wanted to share with you. I have just brought a few questions that I thought you guys will really enjoy in this book because it this changed my life, Masters. This changed my life throughout. This book has been my Bible, honestly, in 2002. I just love sharing this with everyone. We always are fearful. Is there any judgment? Is someone punishing us? Many times, you know, we are fearful of doing things, not because we don't want to do it, because we feel that someone is going to judge us. That's where the concept of hell and heaven has come into picture. So this is the question that was asked. Um, is, there a, is there any judgment? And see the answer that Omni says. Not in the sense that most of you think as judgment. Yes, you have teachers, you have advisors who guide you in making choices based upon your last lifetime, but they are, they are not there to discipline you or to point out your faults. You decide what you're happy with. You decide what you want to create next. Next, no one else. You are in charge. Their role is only to assist you in seeing a greater vision of yourself. Part of our being has been present on what has been called the afterlife or the astral plane as teacher and guide to those who are offering guidance to you while you are in both in the physical and in the non-physical states. Our experience tells us that humanity's belief in its inferiority is so strong. Master, this is very, very important for us to know. Omni is saying that the humanity's belief in its inferiority, that means we think we are inferior, is so strong that it has also become part of the consciousness of the astral plane. What is astral plane? Astral plane is the plane that is around us. So whatever we think, those vibrations go in that astral plane. So when we feel that we are inferior, it is not only on the physical plane, even the astral plane is full of that inferior kind of fearful kind of vibrations. Meaning that the astral plane of reality that surrounds the earth is a reflection of the evolution of your entire species. Therefore, those beings who enter the astral plane at lower vibration levels make choices concerning future lives that are unnecessary in terms of hard, hardships. For there is still a very strong belief that suffering is necessary to reach a higher spiritual goal. We are the cause of our own suffering because of our belief. What is happening, masters, when we come to this plane through that astral plane that I said, because the group consciousness has left so much vibration in that astral plane, low vibration, which has the belief that if you have to achieve something, it's only through pain and hardships. So it is the group belief we are carrying within us. Break that shackles, my dear masters. We do not need to go through any pain or despair to evolve or to create our, our, our reality or to achieve our spiritual goal. No, we don't. Remember in the past, people used to do tapasya, you know, hot sun, they are standing and they're doing, because they believed that if you, for doing penance, you have to do hardships. So in, on empty stomach, they would go fasting for years because it was their belief that you can only gain salvation through that. That is what Omni is saying. It is your belief. If you believe that you can gain your spiritual goal with no hardships, you don't need hardships, then you don't have to do masters. I, I just love the way that we are caught up in this belief system. And what, it's absolutely beautiful, you know, one thing after another. These are the common questions we all have masters, isn't it? And now we come to the four principles of creation that this whole book is so beautiful, described so beautifully. And I'm going to bring one after another. I, uh, people who have attended my workshop, they all know how much passionate about I am for about this four um, uh, principles of creation because I have talked about this in the past. And it gives, gives me great pleasure today on this platform to share this great wisdom of Omni through uh, the author John L. Payne. So when we talk about the four principles of creation, Omni says, these four principles of creation are a description of our divine nature and they are who we are. So what I'm going to show you is not someone else, my dear master, this is you and me, this is our divine nature. So we start the first one, the first principle of creation that is your divine nature is what? 
love. So you are the love. Love is your greatest longing. You seek to accept and allow. The universe, what is the universe? That unifying field of consciousness, which we call God, have come. That's what we call God, isn't it? It's a place that operates with equality and fairness. And it operates according to universal laws. We all know. And we also have discussed that love is the complete and total acceptance of what is. And I said, love means you have to allow all others to be who they are and allowing yourself to be who you are. Why? Masters, we are self-critical. We do not show love to our own self. And that's why Omni is saying that you have to love yourself, allow yourself to be who you are. Many times we feel, oh, I'm too fat. I'm not acceptable to myself. We don't even want to look ourselves in the mirror. Be a bit kind to yourself, master. Just allow yourself to be who you are. When you learn to allow yourself to be who you are, then you learn to allow people around you to be who they are. You stop having demands that if you are behaving like this, then I love you. If you buy me this gift, then I love you. That conditional love vanishes, my dear master, and then results in unconditional love. My dear masters, Omni says, you are a being of free will. And as such, you are held in a place of total acceptance and the loving. You are dearly loved. By beginning to know that you are loved and accepted beyond all measures, you can begin to master the universal laws to create the life you want. If you want to create the life what you want, first you have to start loving yourself, masters. Because loving comes with a loving. So only when you start a loving, will you be able to love. That is the key behind love. If you cannot allow, you cannot love. So start thinking that love aspect from this perspective, my dear masters. The second principle of creation, and that is your nature, is health and well-being. Health and well-being is your nature, my dear masters. Omni says, health and well-being are your natural states of being. Illness and disease are the results of mass beliefs or your own individual belief. And because of that, it results in fear. And what happens with fear, my dear masters? Emotional blocks. How many times we have discussed this? The original fear that humans carry deep within them. You know what's the fear they carry? That they will be separated from the source. What is the source? That universal consciousness. And what they are fearful is, they may be alone through understanding that your fears are simply that fears are not reality. You can free yourself from the original cause of illness and disease. You're never alone, my dear masters. You never have to feel that you're alone. Very important. Once you feel that you are part of that universal consciousness, your mass belief, your individual belief, your fears will go. And that's where you'll get your health and well-being. The third one, the third principle of creation, which is your divine nature, is abundance, my dear masters. What is abundance? We have talked about it in so many places and workshops. Part of your life's purpose is to move beyond lack, scarcity, and limitations. Although the experience of lack can be valuable, it can be valuable in terms of learning some lessons at certain times. It's not required as a learning tool. You can learn what is, what is scarcity. For learning, it's okay. But that's all. You get the experience, leave it. Poverty, lack, and scarcity stem directly from your primal fear. The fear that you are separated from your source. Every fear is only coming from that aspect, masters, that you are alone, that you are not joining the source, but you are the source, my dear masters. Do not fear. So you are the source of your own abundance through uncovering your beliefs related to lack and scarcity. You can begin to create abundance in every area of your life. Very, very important masters, what we are saying, abundance, that's our nature. How can we not have it? The fourth principle of creation which describes our nature is creativity, my dear masters. Creativity is at the very core of each soul. 
you are driven to create experience that is what we are come here for to create experience creativity is also part of your service to the whole the greater whole as you create you discover more of who you are see when a, a paint a, an artist starts painting the creativity flows out so you have to let it out master to find out who you are or what you can do it is the very nature of soul to be creative but many of you have forgotten your creativity by believing that the ways in which you can express yourself are limited to only certain area you know what we say i am good at it that means i can't do anything else that is your belief some people say oh i am a good manager i can manage but i can't do things it is your belief so don't make yourself limited to certain roles or functions in life because you are much bigger than that my dear masters and that's very important to know so till now i told you what are the four things that is principle of creation that means that's your divine nature but we have forgotten the four thing that i mentioned was love health and well being abundance and creativity this is what we are but we have forgotten so how do we bring it back into our lives masters so that yellow column that i have got here are the tools to enhance the emergence of this principles back into our life so how do we bring it back and memorize exactly as i said allow masters if you want to bring love back into your life start allowing allowing means just let be allow yourself to be who you are and allow others to be who they are it's very very important masters little things masters but problem is we are not paying enough attention on that life is not too difficult masters because we are the part of that universal consciousness isn't it next one the second nature was health and well being how do we bring that back into our life by forgiveness masters now when i talk about forgiveness in my workshops i talk about forgiveness for hours together why why is it so difficult to have forgiveness why do i have to talk so long because this is the question we all have forgiveness seems to be so difficult for many of us what do we need to understand in order to make it easier so this is the question that we each of us really need to understand so omni says forgiveness is remembering the truth of who you really are that act of forgiveness is not about saying that what the other person did is okay it is truly about remembering who you are so many of you put so much energy into resisting the things that you do not want you forget that you are indeed the creator there is nothing outside yourself that can exert itself against you everything that is in your experience is there because you have directed your attention to it if you remember the times when you have been hurt and you remember and talk about the hurt then more of the same pain will be delivered to you we know all this through law of attraction don't we if you remember abandonment you will get abandonment so my dear masters when you are unable to forgive another what you are doing is denying your own power you have the power to forgive if you are not able to forgive that means you are saying i do not have the power your own power as creator and you are handing it over to the other person now what you are saying is that you are subject of the will of another so remember once you remember who you truly are then forgiveness will become your second nature for you will truly understand that nothing can exert any influence on you and you have the power you alone have the power to forgive anyone at any place at any time so forgiveness is about remembering who you are if you have not forgiven then you have not remembered that you are loved by this universe beyond all measures so masters what is what omni is saying is if you are not able to forgive others that means you do not know or you are not acknowledging that you are the creator so important for us to understand so when we understand this forgiveness becomes so easy my dear masters now 
we talked about forgiveness now what was the third nature the third nature of us was abundance and how do we bring abundance in our life my dear masters gratitude every morning every night whenever you can every time you have to be grateful of what you have in your life many people say i don't have enough in my life what should i be grat grateful about you have oxygen to breathe you have mother earth who is giving you shelter start with that what happens is when you start being grateful of the little pleasures in your life then you start drawing abundance in your life because what you focus on wherever you place your attention automatically it increases it's such an important thing my dear masters the fourth one i said four principles of creation which is your divine nature the fourth one is creativity and how do you bring creativity into your life my dear masters by self appreciation but in our culture people say oh you should not appreciate yourself that is not being modest this is how we have been brainwashed self appreciation is very important if you want to bring back the creativity it enhances your ability to create by acknowledging what you have so you have to appreciate yourself my dear masters then only you can bring the creativity back into your life so how can we learn self appreciation we are not very good at it so omni says you can learn self appreciation just like any other skill if you want to learn like you know if sometimes people want to learn how to bake cake what you would do first you would buy a book on the subject or you will ask somebody else how to bake a cake and then you start practicing and when you begin to enjoy the results how by eating the cake then you practice some more and then you start making corrections to where you went wrong so when your baking starts improving you start doing more and more so exactly self appreciation is also a piece of cake and that's the same practice that we have to do little by little nothing is going to be very easy my dear masters but nothing is difficult as well somewhere it has to start like baking cake isn't it so this is exactly in this book omni keeps telling us that this is important try self appreciation even if people are saying oh don't appreciate yourself that is rude no it is perfect my dear masters so if we move on to the next part these are my tips for self appreciation i always do this masters you know if you want to take a picture of this slide do it because i do it every morning it's such a great song i am a happy soul my body is healthy my relationships are in harmony my work is perfect my life is beautiful you sing this song as you keep singing this song you create the thought visualize it and make it your reality now people ask me how many times should we sing this song as many times as you want and when you are saying it that you are a happy soul feel the happiness whatever i have marked in red feel it when you say my body is healthy feel health when you say my relationships are in harmony feel it that all your relationships are in harmony when you say my work is perfect then just feel that your work is perfect my dear masters because that is how it is and my life is beautiful yes visualize your life is beautiful that's what happens masters so feel free to use this and this is going to bring a big change in your life this is a great tip for self appreciation now my dear masters some of the questions that today i'm going to share with you in this from this book they're amazing this is one of the questions i wanted to share i'm i'm going a bit fast because there's so much i would like to share with you i want to slow down but i may skip a few things that i wanted to i know um, i've got an hour's time but i'm i i may keep the question answers very little at the end because i would rather share more wisdom with you so my dear masters one of the great questions i love from this book is many of us are looking for our life's purpose trying to figure out what our life's work will be how can we know what is what is it pomni says the primary purpose of your life is to lead a life of joy it is often a very difficult thing for you to hear this when we say it 
or when we say that there is nothing more important than that you feel happy and good about yourself. Yet that is the highest truth. How can we say that it's your primary purpose to live a life of joy? The statement is based on these four principles of creation. The universe is built on the four undeniable, all-pervading principles. And it is these principles that you seek to manifest. Remember, they are love, health, well-being, abundance, and creativity. Which one of you can say that you don't want these things? Nobody will deny, isn't it, Masters? These four principles are basically our nature. If that is what it is, it's obvious that the main purpose, we have come here to lead a life of joy. But there is so much confusion. Confusion about one's life purpose is caused by judgment, my dear Masters. Many of us hold the notion that there's an external authority somewhere and they call it God. And the God is approving or disapproving of what we are doing. But my dear masters, Omni says, you are born with free will and love and freedom are one and the same thing. And you have the freedom to do what you want. Your life's purpose and your life's work are separate but connected. I did speak in my last session, not this, but in my workshop about what is life purpose and what is life work. Your life purpose is that part of yourself that you come to evolve in this lifetime. You come with a plan, how you're going to evolve and that's your life purpose. Your life purpose is more successfully accomplished during the process of developing and exploring your life's work because your life work will draw you to circumstances that are ideal for the achievement of your personal goals. So how do you know what is life's work? If while doing life work, you can understand what your life goal is, then how do you understand what is your life work? It is exactly what you love to do. Realization of the thing you love to do. So masters, to follow your life's purpose, you should steadfastly follow your joy, irrespective of what the world says. It's very, very, very important masters because we all try to understand and think that there is something called judgment. There is no judgment, masters. Again and again, remember, the primary purpose of life is to lead a life of joy, masters. That's the main thing. That's the main thing that this book has clearly said. Not only this book, masters, there's so many books that have said the same thing. So I'm going to skip these two questions because we may not have time, but I'm going to go to a very important question which says, I'm in a situation, this is one of the readers asking the question to Omni, says, I'm in a situation where I dislike my joy, job, I dislike my home and have no idea what I want to do or where I want to live. Every day seems like a difficult task. How can I turn this around? How many of us have this question, my dear masters? I do counseling. And almost every other day I get this question. So let's hear what Omni has to say about this. When you are in this position, you are in a position of great resistance. You're resisting life. You're focusing on much on what you do not want to do. It seems as if all those things yet you don't want are in control of your life. Remember, the universe reacts to thought. Thought is the basis of all creation, therefore, when you are in a position of great resistance, your attention is focused almost entirely on the things that you don't want. This is a very uncomfortable position indeed. What you can do is shift your focus, even if it's a small shift and for short periods of time. What most of you do when you try to be positive in such situation is try to see the situation changing into a more positive one. However, your focus is generally still on the situation. The universe can only deliver to you that which you focus on. Instead of seeing the situation going away, we just want the situation to vanish. So Omni is saying, don't focus on that. Instead, simply visualize a new situation, a new job, a new home coming your way. There is a universal law that says you cannot leave anything until you love it. 
so you cannot ask your situation to vanish unless you love it what that means in order for something to leave your life you must first release it by accepting in my awareness workshop i have talked in great detail about what is acceptance and surrender so if you don't like something that is happening in your life first accept it that is what amni omni is saying as you accept something you stop resisting it as you stop resisting something your focus is no longer in it therefore you are no longer giving it energy and no longer giving it any life and that's how you change the situations in your life so many of you simply allow your life to happen to you we just let the life happen you have become reactive instead of creating things for so we're saying okay we are not sure why it is happening we are complaining more so this is what omni is saying you should learn you should learn the value of accepting and not resisting resisting things very important masters omni says your soul which is your eternal part it wants to fully manifest through you according to the four principle of creation it communicates this to you through your emotions and feelings and sometimes these feelings can be very subtle essentially when you feel good you're on the right track when you feel uncomfortable or bad then you're on the track that will only give you those things you do not want it is through good feelings that your soul inspires you to move as if riding an upward spiral it simply gets better and better so omni says we encourage you not to do what is logical don't go by mind not to do what is right or wrong or expected but to do what feels good for as you feel good you radiate and as you radiate you draw power and energy to yourself as you draw power and energy to yourself you become a master creator in the physical dimension and this is the reason why you are in the physical dimension so why we are here in the physical dimension my dear masters to create we have come here to create 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 my dear masters and not to feel sorry about the things that we don't have so we should learn if you are not liking something then there are ways to change your situation that's exactly what omni has discussed here i love this question masters this question goes for pages and pages i tried to give you a summary but it's beautiful masters i mean some of the things that has been discussed in this book it's so valid every part of our life it is like you can't believe it it it, it is that 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 apt for our um day to day life masters so now as we move on another interesting question that we most of us have masters i've just picked those questions that most of you will resonate and one of those questions here is why do we have so many lives so and this is this is what has been discussed in 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 the book omni says let us tell you what reincarnation is not so he's telling what it's not many of you think you reincarnate so that you may evolve that's not the purpose although on one level it's exactly that a path of evolution however you did not go to earth to improve yourself or to become good earth life is only an experience you don't have to become good you are already perfect the way you are earth life is only an experience you are not sent here as an imperfect soul so that you might become better after many lifetimes that's not the purpose it's quite the contrary it means opposite you chose the earth experience in order to increase your skill so omni says all those people who are reading books or are, or you are hearing to my words they are already enlightened beings of light and they are called masters so you are all masters if you haven't read this book you are listening through me omni's words so you are all masters and omni says as a master you choose to add physicality to your distinctiveness and you did this because physically phys physicality presents unique challenges it's true master we know when we come in this physical dimension there are challenges and we all know earth is one of the most challenging schools so far from being the dunes of the universe so we are not deserts of the universe we are skilled souls 
who chose a belief system, we chose this reality that would help us to increase our skills. Omni says you are multidimensional being. As such, not only are you focused in physical reality, but there are parts of your being that are conscious and present in higher dimensions. Just don't think you're a physical dimension. There is an extension, sorry, or this is an extension to who you truly are. So you have got a greater self, your higher self. It checks on you. It's always helping you. It's always wishing, waiting for you to become aware of it. Your Purnatma, your higher self is always waiting. This causes great celebration for this is the greater purpose of your soul self. So what is the deepest desire of the soul? Is for you to become fully conscious while in the physical body. This is what it is, my dear masters. And that is what enlightenment is. Some people have called it enlightenment. Others have called it ascension. And Omni says, we call it becoming fully conscious. So the main idea is why we are here so many lives is at one point for us to understand, to become fully conscious whilst in the physical body. So become fully conscious of what? that you are that all pervasive consciousness being in the physical body yet holding the broadest focus that is why we come here that is what we are practicing here masters because it is not easy when we refer omni says when we refer to young souls mature souls old souls we're not talking about age we are talking about this experience so the older the soul is the quicker the soul understands this particular point this is what, masters, this is what we are trying to learn in our meditation, through our practice, through our journey within, to hold this broader perspective, being limited in the physical body with the challenges that we are, but yes, yet knowing completely and being aware that you are that consciousness. Such a beautiful way of explaining why we take so many lives. So we are not here to prove ourselves. There's nothing to prove because once we don't have the body, we know everything in that light forms, but this is the challenge to be in this human body and still keep that broader perspective. Amazing way. First of all, we should all be proud of who we are, my dear masters. And uh, it's, it's really a great thing. Now, I thought this would interest you. What is a soulmate? We, we asked this question so many times, isn't it? What, what is a soulmate? So I thought I'll, I'll pick this question. And um, Omni says, there is much misunderstanding about this subject. So when you people talk about soulmate, you're thinking of that one special individual that you fall in love with and with whom you will live happily ever after. You may even feel as if this one special love has always been your lover every lifetime and you're simply awaiting for his presence. This is what we see in the movies, isn't it? Every lifetime, the partner is waiting for the other partner and Omni is saying, this is the misconception you have. He says, many souls do encounter one another in lifetime after lifetime, for they have become friends. This friendship is based in the non-physical world, which is in essence called cooperation and is based upon their past success in achieving the growth they are seeking. You are growth seeking beings and all encounters, both physical and non-physical provide opportunities for growth. Therefore, there is certain soul with whom you have had great success in achieving your goal. You're likely to agree to work with that again and again. So that's very important to understand how souls are organized. Your journey into the physical world is deliberate journey. You have chosen it. You've already mastered life in other realities. And now you have come to earth to broaden your experience. And the ultimate goal is to experience unconditional love that which is accepting and allowing. So we've already talked about what is the ultimate goal. So before we take such journeys, how nicely Omni has explained, I have tried to bring the picture here so that you can understand. This is how the soul families are organized. So I hope it makes some sense to you masters. So what Omni says is, before we start taking this journey onto earth, the souls organize themselves into groups. You could see this as support groups. So we are starting from down, the soul family. Yeah, souls organize themselves into families, groups, 
clans, nations, and grand nations. There are seven souls in a soul family and seven families in a soul group and seven groups in a soul clan and so on. Eventually, you will work with most members of your soul clan, that is 343 individual souls. My dear master, does that number ring a bell? Remember what Omni says, that we are a group of 343 beings. So Omni is coming from the level of soul clan, isn't it? 343 number sounds familiar. However, for those of you who are teachers, so whoever is a spiritual teacher here on this earth, you will more than likely, you would have reached your soul nation or grand nation, which totals almost 17,000 souls. So this is where the journey starts, my dear masters, from soul family. This is how we start organizing. And then after that, you know, seven soul families become one soul group. Then when we reach here, and then after that, the soul clan. So then it is seven soul groups. And then seven soul clans is one soul nation. And then seven soul nation is one grand nation. So this is how the whole hierarchy of souls is happening. The majority of your relationship, like close friendships, or, you know, your association, they are from this 49, this soul family of 49, you know, seven soul groups. However, not always the case. The more you advance in terms of acceptance, the more skilled you will become at working with individuals who have a different energy signature than yourself. So when you are very early experienced, so you will only be working with your soul families. But as your perspective starts growing, then you slowly start climbing up the ladder. And by the time, you are teaching, spiritual teaching, you are at this level. So you are dealing with 16,807 people at least at that level on a, on a regular basis. So for example, many members of one soul group could be concerned with communication and teaching, another with healing, another with courage, another with self-acceptance. So each one has got one particular aspect of learning. So at this particular level, you are already have seven soul nations. So you, this, at grand nation, you have seven soul nation and each soul nation must be working on one experience. So at that level, you're working with different kinds of experience. It's so nicely through a pictorial form, this has been um, explained to us. So I just thought um, you, you people might like it. Um, and there was another interesting question, which I thought, um, so I hope you have seen this picture well, how the soul family then goes up to soul group, to soul clan, soul nation, grand nation, right? Now, this is a question most of us have. Are parents and children soulmates and are they part of a soul family? So Omni says, there are soulmates in as much as you know, as you not only know them, but you have chosen to work with them for specific purpose of achieving growth. So yes, we, we, we come with um, our parents or whoever is in the family um, from the soul family. So no birth is an accident for all souls enter this world by agreement. We all know, you know, there's an agreement between parents. Now your parents and siblings may very well all be the members of your soul family, but this is extremely rare. Normally one, perhaps two members of your biological family will be from the soul family, but the rest will generally be from your group, clan, nation, or grand nation. So if you remember my picture, what he's saying, one or two of your family may be from your soul family, but the others may come from different levels. So sometimes these questions come, we are always thinking, we are from one family, so are we from the same soul family? So one soul family is only seven, isn't it? But for families like me who are 10, then obviously can't be from the soul family, isn't it? But sorry, that's on the lighter side. But just saying that family members need not be from the same soul family. So that's what I wanted to share with you. What, what other questions do we have? Just let's go. This is one question, masters. I just love it. Why do we search endlessly for the one true love? in the hope of finding our soulmate. We are always saying, you know, I'm looking for my soulmate. If someone wants to get married, oh, I'm looking for my soulmate. So this question is quite valid. And let's see what uh, Omni has got an answer. So Omni says, what you're looking for is acceptance. You believe 
that this one true love will accept you without conditions your search for that one is in fact the search for self acceptance each relationship is there to provide you with a new opportunity to know yourself it is through knowing yourself that you can grow to accept yourself and to love yourself the one true love is self love so that one true love that you are looking for is nobody but you yourself and there is no other love the greatest secret of all discovered by christ and buddha and many others was the secret of falling in love with yourself when you love yourself you are in a state of acceptance total acceptance as you accept you stop resisting the world and all that in it as you give up resistance you allow everything to be as it is as you allow everything to be as it is god can work through you it is at this point that you can say i and the father what is the father jesus always used this consciousness you are the part of it you are one for you will be at one with the source of all life you will be at one with love so masters a concept about we are looking for that one true love in the hope of finding our soulmate is we are looking for our own self masters i love this i love the way this question has been answered <coughs> amazing amazing <coughs> so i get very emotional you know some of the questions are so close to our heart and let's see what's the next question that i picked how many lives does a typical soul have on earth i'm sure you know you i have this i had this questions um, when i started my journey and i thought i'll share with you all so let's see what omni has answered a soul may have as little as one earth life or several hundred or thousands or more earth life times so he's just given a vague answer but then he says typically a soul will have 250 to 350 lifetime experiences incarnating on an average of once per century so one lifetime per century however a soul may choose to skip a couple of centuries and then incarnate in rapid succession in several lifetimes in a row so all these things are possible the average gap between two incarnation is around 40 years but now these days that gap is reducing considerably that means we are not even giving 40 years gap less than that so this has occurred because why is this happening why the gap has reduced because humanity is at a major junction in in its evolutionary progress and many souls want to participate in this time of evolution so people are fast one incarnation gone they want to come immediately because so much ascension is going on who wants to miss the ascension nobody wants to miss the ascension so if that has answered how many lives does a typical soul has so let's see what's the next question that we have got what happens once we are complete with our journey of many lifetimes on earth i i i, I love this question masters these are the questions when i started my spiritual journey i loved these questions i read them again and again and again what, what happens finished all my lifetimes on earth so what happens then let's see what omni has got to say possibilities are endless you will initially spend time in what is the astral plane so we have finished the physical plane then we spend in astral plane as guide or a minister ministers are beings who attend to the needs of those who are leaving the physical plane after their death they perhaps assist them to leave their physical bodies if there are difficulties and assist to create an atmosphere that is comforting for the new arrival in the non physical realm so that that's what a guide or a minister does so when we finish our job here that's what that's our next job right they are present around those who are in the process of dying physically and keep a focus of love upon them transmitting day and night thoughts of peace love and harmony most of you choose to do this at least for a short while and many of you experience doing this not only after your cycle has been completed on earth but also between lives and sometimes at night as you sleep master so important so this job that you do as a guide or minister does not be after all your lifetimes are finished he's saying you can also do between your lives like you have one incarnation finished you've got 40 more years in between so you can do this job or 
even at night times we can do this job you know in the astral realm we can go and be the ministers isn't that i i find it so intriguing so at night time if you're sleeping and if you get a dream that you're helping someone to to die smoothly to go into astral plane astral plane this is what it is masters how exciting oh my god i'm getting goosebumps already so some of you then go on to become teachers you sit on the advisory boards that assist soul to make wise choices concerning their next incarnation or you spend time communicating with incarnate souls whilst their bodies are asleep you may even choose to study further and indeed teach at the seven schools of enlightenment these schools are present in the astral and higher planes of existence and sir as a repositories of information and experience souls gather there to share their experience of their forerunners and also to pass on their experience who will follow after them so there are many jobs to do masters after we finish here don't worry what am i going to do after i finish my cycle on the earth will i be jobless no we are not jobless we've got such a big list of jobs isn't that isn't that beautiful so um let's pick the next question i think i've got a few more questions i would like to share and um, i'm just looking at the time i have a weakness of this book masters oh i still have time that's okay um i'm doing very well for time no worries i hope you're enjoying these questions that i have picked because i'm enjoying thoroughly i might have read this book god knows how many times i'm still enjoying it right so let's pick the next question what what question do we have about life are negative conditions necessary for growth this is the belief that we humanity has that we need to have challenges in life we need to have adverse condition in life why because growth only comes when you have hardships then you understand because that's how we've been taught what do they say when you are studying what they say oh you have to work hard you know you have to put at least 8 hours a day study even after we come back from school like you have to study at least for 6 hours only then can you get first class not only there sometimes they say if you want to get a job you have to work hard he is a lazy guy you know these things come up oh he is a lazy guy he never studies how can he have a good life so we have in our mind that if we have a good life that means there is no growth so this question somebody is asking to omni are negative conditions necessary for growth let's see what omni is saying omni said absolutely not negative conditions are in the simplest sense the result of your thinking think of positive things and they will be yours think of negative things they too will be yours because the physical reality is characterized by the sense of not knowing a sense of alienation from all that is souls have used negative conditions to encourage the personalities that have created to move forward towards a more joyful experience the physical reality is a perfect reality for feeling and experiencing comparison in the physical reality to experience a whole lot of what you don't want stimulates you into thinking about and striving for what you do want the contrast masters that i was talking your primary intention and this is true for all of us on the planet is to create a life that fully expresses the four principles of creation you have deliberately set out to create a life in which you can express yourself in health and well being in abundance through love and you do so by using your power to create comparison has helped you to experience yourself as what love is not comparison never gives you joy it helps you to only understand what is not love what health is not what abundance is not so against your divine nature the state of opposites seek to catapult you forward at any time you have the freedom to choose the positive pole of everything that exist there is no law or condition other than your own thinking that keeps you experiencing what is not joyful to you negative conditions are a choice although we understand that you are not deliberately choosing them but it is in giving your attention to them that the choice is made 
So though you are not choosing it deliberately, but because your attention is always there because you don't want it, that is what is ruling your life, the negative conditions. So my dear masters, we really do not need that. That's what the book says. The negative conditions are not required for growth. So I've got two more questions and then we'll stop and I'll definitely take um, some question answers, right? So the next question that I would like to discuss, which I, which I always like to know, who and what are our spirit guides? We talk about our guides, guides, guides all the time. Who are they? So what does Omni say about our spirit guides? Spirit guides are as varied as the members of our own species. A spirit guide can be a relative that has passed out of the physical plane and now seeks to guide you through the rest of your physical life. These guides will always be members of your soul group, remember. They'll always be the members of your soul group and you will have known them for many lifetimes. So it's not just one lifetime. You will know them for many lifetimes. They may be complete with their earth experiences and therefore choose to serve as a guide before moving on to other dimensions and realities. Although you may experience them as the personality you knew while they were in the physical, it is indeed their greater self, their soul with its broader, greater perspective that is acting as the guide. You may have known them in physicality, but now they are in the non-physical dimension. They will retain the outer clothing of their personality self so that you may identify with them. For you to recognize them, they will still maintain that physical appearance. This is also true of other guides that come forth from your soul group. Perhaps you knew them in a past life, perhaps sharing a life in an ancient or foreign culture. In this case, they may choose to appear to you as a member of the historic culture because it is known to you at a deeper level and it gives you a good friendly feeling. So spirit guides can be members of your own soul group or aspects of yourself. So you're a vast being in your own right. As this being, you have had many thousands of lifetime experiences and you have a lot to offer yourself in terms of wisdom and experience. Your higher self often appears to you as a guide. All guides, whether they be a part of your soul group or not, they work in cooperation with your higher self. It cannot be any other way. Your soul or higher self is the captain of the ship and guides you day and night. So masters, this is what the story of the spirit guide is. Now, one, uh, the last question that I would close my session with is quite interesting. And uh, let's, let's see, um, why do we experience death and disease, right? So with this question, I will close today's session and then I'll take a few question answers. Um, so why do we experience physical death and disease? And let's see what Omni has got to say. We could say that fear causes death and disease. We all know it's fear, isn't it? That expressed in the simplest way is the truth from our perspective. You are the physical extension of a non-physical entity. You are a finger of God protruding into the physical world. As such, you are tapped into and are part of the same creative force that created the universe. It is this energy that flows through you that not only creates your physical body, but also sustains it in much the same way that food and water sustains your physical body. It is this very same energy that you mold with your thoughts in order to bring what you're thinking into your experience. There are but two real emotions that you feel. One is love and the other is fear. Masters, I've always talked about love-based emotions, fear-based emotions. Omni is also saying the same thing. These are the only two emotions, basic emotions, love and fear. We've already stated that the primary law of the universe is love. This law of love is about complete and total acceptance of what is. It's about a loving, it is expansive. It does not restrict in any way. When you are in the mode of a loving and accepting, you're fully open to the creative forces of the universe. This means that your body is fully nourished and does not age. Have you not noticed how joyful people seem to look physically younger and those who focus on the negative 
are often sick and poor. This is not a coincidence. It is joy that leads to eternal life. When we speak of eternal life, we speak of life in an ageless physical body, for you already have eternal life. Part of mastering the earth plane is making conscious choices on how and when to depart physically, physicality. We can make choice when we want to leave this body masters. Not all of us will do this, but many of us will. We are going through the time of ascensions, my dear masters. Many souls will simply choose to have many lifetimes on the physical plane and then go on to other planes of existence once the physical shell has been discarded. However, for many, the challenge is to remain in the physical lifetime after lifetime until a state of fearlessness is achieved. We will be here till we achieve fearlessness, masters. We have to overcome that aspect of fear. The state of being fearless or to state positively, the state of love. So what's the opposite of fear? Love. So the state of love and of allowing is exquisite. And it is what many of you have been calling enlightenment. So masters, what it basically Omni here is saying is, we don't have to go through this, neither death or disease. It is our fear, it is our mass belief masters that what we are going through. Your identification with the physical world has caused death and disease. Although on one level we can say that physical death is unnatural, they're not saying it's natural, it is unnatural. And they're clearly saying that it was also known beforehand that this would be one of the side effects of consciousness entering into physicality. Death is part of the earth experience, but that can and will change in future. Not only will death change, but there have also always been a few who have mastered the physical existence to the extent that they have often lived in a youthful state for between 300 to 500 years. Many of these enlightened ones have lived in India and the Himalayas, but each region of the planet has known such men and women. When this change comes about, depends largely on humanity. So when this change comes to the entire humanity, not just exception of few people like Mahavatar, Babaji or Himalayan masters, if this change has to come, through the public, then our beliefs have to change, masters. We have to let go the fear, let go. So there is so much in this beautiful book, masters. There is so much in this beautiful book. I cannot stop um, talking about this book. And this lovely book, I don't know how many of you can see this, but this is how this book looks like. And this is my Bible, my guide. And I can't thank John Payne and Omni for this pearls of wisdom that came into my life just a few months after I stepped on to spirituality. I'm so thankful for what I am today. I thank Omni and John Payne for that. Very much indebted, indebted to this book, Masters. So I'm happy to take any questions or answers more than. Um, so my dear Swapna, all over to you. I think I have talked for too long, so I'll just have a few <laughs> sips of water. Ma'am, but we must organize. Just wanted to hear for longer. I mean, such a beautiful and insightful session. It answered so many questions. Like we know that there are various words that we use on day-to-day -day basis, like gratitude or you know, allowing or self-love. But how we correlate them and how we manifest and how are these four principles of creation in our life. You so beautifully summarized, ma'am. And with your permission, I know every word is a key takeaway, but I've noted a couple of things that I really felt I need to share. So with your permission, ma'am. Please. So one thing uh, very important that you, I mean, one of the most important you said was like, if you if you are ready to receive the information, it will flow to you. And openness is the thing that is really needed. And Mastery means creating experience of joy, which is the ultimate goal. And my favorite belief and thought is the one that causes karma and it's not the action. 
this is like yes. an eye opener because we've been hearing since ages that you know what you do is what you based on that is you get karma but this is an eye opener ma'am and so beautifully you summarized the four principles of creation where in the love you can create that by allowing having yourself as well as allowing others without interference and health and well being by practicing forgiveness abundance by practicing gratitude and creativity by self appreciation thank you so much ma'am and don't focus on what you do not want and always shift your focus on what you want because where you focus creates the experience for you i mean these are just like very few points ma'am and really it's such a beautiful session thank you so much thank you so much swapna you you really um recap the whole thing so well and just the key points that have touched my heart uh, you have just reiterated again um really i'm i'm really thankful for giving me this opportunity to share this book because it's a it's really a treasure of wisdom thank you so much swapna thank, thank you so much for bringing it to us and we have one question ma'am uh, someone is asking doesn't self appreciation create ego yeah so this the, this is what the misconception we have there are two things uh, again this all comes back to our mass beliefs um, uh, swapna because uh, more so for people who are who have been brought up in indian background i wouldn't say the western um, part of the world because um, blowing this trumpet stuff is only bad thing back in india because that's how we have been brought up um, even if you do quite good uh, you're not allowed to say it through you know you're not allowed to express it it's okay if someone talks about you but you can't talk about yourself and you that is supposed to be humility and you grow with that humility to a point and especially if you have moved out of india and you have stepped into the western world and i'm sure swapna you you would have faced yourself you you can see there's a clash in culture because that's what that's not what people believe in other parts of the world and right from a young age children are very openly appreciating for what they are and because of that what comes out is your creativity comes out more because if you are if you are always looking for outside appreciation you may get it you may not get it you cannot always be positive that whatever you are doing you are going to be given a pat on the back that means you are dependent on someone now if you do something and you really like it there is nothing wrong in saying wow i've done it so well it, many times swapna when we are baking you know that cake example i love it many times we are baking a cake i'm not a, a very good um, you know i'm not very good at baking but um when i do little things if it comes out well i think oh my god next time i could do maybe i could do the icing this way or that way so wh what self appreciation does is we'll talk about ego in one minute because that's one of my favorite topics too but what self appreciation does is it allows you to bring more of that hidden things that you have within you so that's what self appreciation does which doesn't mean okay if you're a modest person you don't want to blow your trumpet do not blow trumpet in front of others but nothing wrong in telling yourself that you are worthy of things many times you know swapna the way we do it we don't want to even spend money on ourselves this is very common in women as especially or uh, you know you'll do things for the whole family but when it comes to yourself you will not spend 100 rupees or 10 dollars because you think or oh, do i really need it or in other words you're saying uh, am i really worthy of spending that money on ourselves this this has to go swapna because i have done both the extremes and nothing wrong in pampering yourself once in a while yes i deserve it self appreciate for what you're doing so that is required if you want to see your creativity coming up then the only way it will be is self appreciation that's a very important thing now ego now where the difference comes is people have to understand ego only comes into picture where there is comparison if someone is doing something great and if there is no one in front of them he won't blow his trumpet ego will always want to boast yourself up in front of others so ego is comparison in your room and self appreciate yourself you don't need a bystander to look at but ego wants audience 
without audience you will not open your mouth see there is difference between ego without comparison ego doesn't come but self appreciation does not need any audience or comparison the problem with uh, ego is i often say that in telugu there is a great saying but because this is an english session i won't say that in telugu but what happens in um, in saying in english if you say that i have done this extremely well it is perfect but if you say i am the only one who can do this perfectly then that is ego in telugu they say nenu cheyagalnu great nene cheyagalnu that is aham this has come from telugu it's a great in fact it was in one of mahesh babu's movie i have written it down because self appreciation means i can do it ego means only i can do it that is where the difference comes uh, swapna beautiful ma'am beautifully answered i mean at this point of time wherein we are all sitting at home because of lockdown and everything i feel this is the best time to practice more of these qualities because people so, out there we are hearing are getting into a lot of mental issues and all and if they practice this self appreciation self love and gratitude and focus more on these things i think this is the best time it's like a blessing for people to practice and come out of that situation thank so you so true. much thank you swapna thank you and we have devi uh, who wants to talk to you ma'am sure i love devi to have come over hello devi hi <laughs> i'm following you like a shadow <laughs> i i i would love you to follow me <laughs> you give me all the energy i need devi i'm so thankful to see you once again yeah whenever i listen to you madam i fall in love with you again and again <laughs> what can i do <laughs> yeah the feeling is mutual <laughs> but when i listen the, about this book from your interview ma'am i felt like i have to listen this in detail from uh, saroja ma'am when i when i get that opportunity like that i am thankful to krishna sai krishna today i i have that opportunity i got that opportunity because of you it's wonderful ma'am i am going to uh, buy that physical copy of that book today itself i will order and i'll go through again thank you so much <laughs> thank you devi devi honestly devi this this book really came into my life yes. I, i always say when the disciple is ready the guru will emerge from wherever it has to similarly yes. when the disciple is thirsty of information and is vibrating the book yes. will fall in our hands we all know and that was the time devi where i was i was in thirst of knowledge in thirst of knowledge in 2002 and with this book fell in my hands i mm. thought this universe is so kind everything i wanted was there in that book and it really made the foundation of who i am today i am so indebted indebted to this book uh, devi one little doubt madam when you when we have a clash between our responsibilities and goals what shall we do very good question devi this is a question that we are all struggling in the current times you know something it's called politically correct we say so sometimes you know though we want to do the right thing we may not be politically correct so keep keep that in mind of this discussion always because this politically correct thing has become the catch phrase whatever you say you know you should be careful that you are not caught back sometime when you look back doesn't matter we we don't have to worry about that but i I still there so what uh, responsibilities and goals if they clash what do we do so first of all this is very important the other day just yesterday was thursday yes thursday was my counseling day and one of the um one of my clients i would say client <laughs> um had exactly the same question so if you are saying your goals and your responsibilities are clashing then you are in trouble devi so how do we get out of it our responsibilities and goals if they match only then we can really fulfill our our job so the easiest way is um, devi when it comes to responsibilities what kind of responsibilities do we have responsibility to ourselves there are only three spheres um, if we make our life easy there are only three spheres in a human being responsibility to personal self responsibility to your family and responsibility to your work when i say family it can be your social circle as well so personal your um, family and closer circle and your if you are working if you are a working person then it's to your work 
and if that's not the case then it has come down so these are the three spheres in which modern women or modern day men are working these are the three spheres so your responsibilities will be in these three spheres your goals also will be in these three spheres only because that is your area of influence so your responsibilities and your goals are only from these three areas what we have to do uh, devi is to take a clean piece of paper and start writing down our goals whatever that goals may be write it down and categorize that is that for your personal is that for your family or is that for your work so that distinction you have to come up for your responsibility or your goal which area is it influencing do that and then pick only one or two devi only one or two thinking that if you are not going to exist tomorrow your incarnation finishes tomorrow which is that one or two goals that will matter out of the 100 you have written just pick that one or two and when you look at that goals you will know that that will be your responsibility if you look from that perspective that today is my last day of living i am not going to be here on this earth tomorrow things become clear, clear as crystals because 90% of our responsibility so called responsibilities are bullshit sorry to use the word french i i would not have but it is we we clutter clutter our life with so many things which are least important devi but if you can imagine that your life is ending tonight you got only one hour to live what is that one or two things that is your goal that is your responsibility that is your everything if you apply this rule you, your confusion won't be there in life otherwise too many things happening in current day modern day for a woman or even for a man so my my two cents worth of um, advice that's all i would say yeah thank you so much ma'am and thank you so much and now where does i listen to i i want to give a chance to other others but i want to sure. give you one information now nowadays i listen to so many women they're struggling with they have to do re home responsibilities they are responsible for kids and they're responsible for earning as well in modern days and yes. having in, not having enough of support and struggling a lot so uh, so i i think it this question will help me to address them and as as, as help uh, me as well so thank you so devi, much devi actually i i would like to say one what what question you have asked i'm so happy because yeah. modern day, i mean um, men don't get me wrong i know you got, you are all very busy but women are unreasonably busy uh, um, i especially working women so much pressure i was yesterday talking to a woman no no names required but her day starts at 4 o'clock and the kind of activities she has young children she starts at 4 sleeps at 10 and when i heard the whole schedule back to back back to back back to back and i'm thinking when is she breathing i don't know where is the space for breathing and she's saying madam what, what do i do now i'm getting anxiety so should i start medication i said before you start medication can you unclutter your life for me she she writes a blog so if that person is here on the platform i really want you to understand that this is not dobbing you in so i'm not naming you but this example will help lot other people so my dear friend if you are there on this platform this is only to help other females so she writes a blog she does yoga she does something else swimming name it so you know modern day pressures you have to look good you have to look fit you have to look very efficient you have to drop your children and then you have to make them um, topper in everything they should be first in the music first in dance first in... why why are you making your life miserable and then you want to take medication for anxiety why why are you putting that pressure what is required what is it if you are not fit like a um, you know aishwarya rai who cares no why i am saying masters nothing wrong if you want to be slim if you have time but 90% are self imposed and then we are going on medication so devi thank you for bringing this question i i really am thankful to you thank you very much thank you devi that was a very very important question that i have been hearing and i have been uh, you know listening to people sharing these things and uh, it, it really helps many of us here thank you so much Ma'am, we have Deepthi who's raising her hand. 
Deepthi, sure. I'm unmuting you. Deepthi, you can speak. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Hello. Hi, Deepthi. Uh, hello, ma'am. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. Uh, actually, I have to say, ma'am, as I told you many times, uh, it's an interview that gave me so much of motivation and inspiration answers to many. And I'm so happy to uh, yeah, listen again that four principles. I, I already have that in my notes. And I would like to say in this platform, ma'am, that self-love, uh, that really a wonderful and first priority that I make in my life that changed the way I think and the happiness what I'm enjoying irrespective of what is around me. I think that's a self-love ma'am because we never try to hurt ourselves and we know that whether we are doing right or not and the forgiveness. So, and also you said something today that I got an answer for it. You said that we should not confide to only one thing. So I thought that I will look into what the something new I want to look. <laughs> So that is how your sessions always help me, ma'am. So I'm very thankful to you once again. And thank you. And you said that that book is a blessing to you. I think you are a blessing to us, ma'am. <laughs> you are a blessing to us. And uh, as I told you, the depressions, whatever the counseling, no, it's not at all needed, ma'am, if you re really practice these four principles in our life. So thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, and Dipti. also, it's lovely. yeah, ma'am. On yeah, you said that ego and uh, self appreciation is said right, but I think ourselves we will be knowing, ma'am, whether we are doing right or not. So, <laughs> whether yes. it's a negative appreciation or a positive, I guess we will be knowing yes. it while practicing all this. So, and well, my baby is giving me a chair to sit. <laughs> <laughs> that is how. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I think many thank you, Deepthi. Nice to have you. Yep. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Deepthi. Very aptly said. If you listen to ma'am's sessions, I mean, definitely there's a lot of wisdom, so much wisdom we can apply in our day-to-day -day life. And I am very blessed to say that I'm one of them who's immensely benefiting. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, we have you, Suresh Garu so who would like to talk to you. Suresh Garu. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Ma'am, uh, today is a, uh, another uh, great day in the PSSM movement. Listening to extempore uh, session by Saraja Madam. Uh, we know Saraja Madam before MDMC attended Kailas Puri. We have fixed uh, one personality of Saraja Madam. But uh, right from MDMC, December 19 onwards, we have seen uh, Mr. Ru of Madam uh, giving lecture after lecture, lecture after lecture in uh, Zoom, Zoom sessions. Uh, really, today is a great day and it is an apt session fitting the uh, digital Swajaya Yoga, uh, explaining in detail. We are like LKG students before the teacher. Uh, we listen to all four all, all principles of creation that is love, health, and well being, abundance, and creativity. Uh, we are explained in detail, madam. Thank you very much once again for uh, giving us such a wonderful. Uh, speech for, for enlightening us once again. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Suresh Garu. It was lovely to talk to you. Other day I saw you uh, uh, during Ray Chandran session, but I uh, didn't have a chance yeah. to say hello to you. I'm so yeah, happy yeah. that you're here today, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank uh, you for your thank, kind. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Suresh Garu. Ma'am, we have sure. Naveena Devireti. Sure. Like Hello, ma'am. This is Ganga. Uh, thank you so Ganga, much. How for... are you? Good, madam. How are you? <laughs> oh, thank good, you thank so you. much, madam, for today's session. It connected so many dots. Whatever dots we have been putting, it connected so many dots and answered so many questions. Thank you so much for you and the organizers for this wonderful session. Uh, like uh, I've had some question like that, like uh, karma, is it like whatever we do in this life, will it be coming back in this life or previous life, all those questions. Now I got the answer that whatever you believe, even it is previous life or this life, that's what comes back uh, irrespective of the lives. Uh, thank you so much, madam. And one question also we are getting like, uh, there, there's some date like December 21st, something is going to happen, uh, these Palladians are going to come. And it's creating anxiety like so many people. 
I wanted to ask to you, what should we do? Or should we prepare for something like that? Because of this ascension, which you talked in this yeah. session. Yeah. So that was the main reason, Ganga, that why I picked that question about evolution, because one of the question was, what is going to happen? Anything drastic? See, uh, this is back in 2001, because everyone knew that 2012 was a doomsday coming up and everyone was waiting for 2012. Something will happen in 2012. So oh, most of these questions about evolution in this book is from that perspective. So, but, but the fear is the same that when the new age will start or when the change will come, what will be the condition of this planet? And Omni very clearly said, you know, you're not going to see much change, but it is in your thought process too. If you want to see the change through disasters, he's, it's all about thinking Gangadhar and this Corona time has showed us so clearly, we are going through ascension. We are going through tremendous evolution. People who believe that change can come through pain are going through pain at this stage. But people like you and me, we don't know when Corona issue even started. The whole world is fearful. Yes, I, I, I'm not uh, discounting that. But you and I, we are living in joy. Anuradha, look at the beam on her face. Suresh ji, he looks so happy. Swapna, she's already planning for her next session. I mean, we are doing so much at this stage. Honestly, as Suresh Garu mentioned, from February, I don't know where my time is going. My family is complaining they don't see me at all. Either I'm behind a computer or I'm <laughs> cooking very fast and efficient because I have to get ready for my... So, I have worked in corporate world for 33 years. Of course, I was busy, but where was my heart? Heart was somewhere, work was somewhere. Here, my heart is where I am. So no matter what we do, you know, it's, it's so much fun. So this is what it is. Pleadians are no, no one but our future. Pleadians are showing us where we are going because pleadians went exactly through what we are going now. So they are so much interested in guiding us at this time because they know what we are going through. So they are saying, we are there holding your hand. We are ready to communicate and we are your future. They've gone through all this, many civilizations, many planets have gone through what we are going through now, Gangadhar. Nothing yeah. will happen. Like how we did in Corona times, happily Zoom session, like that we will be doing Zoom, happily Zoom or some other application. And we will be having a celebration. And like we came to know Mother Earth so well, we came to know nature um, so well. Now we talk about Pleiadians as if they are our next door neighbors. We talk about Arcturians as if they are my back door neighbors. Syrians, <laughs> just next path. We never talked like this before. Now we yeah. sit in the meditation and we say, oh, Babaji, come on. You come on. <laughs> I mean, when did we sit like this and call people left, right, and center as if they are my family members? Now we do. <laughs> yeah. So it is our level of thinking, our evolution. It's already happening. Yeah. Nothing will happen on December 21st for you and me. We'll still be happily <laughs> talking on Zoom, Gangadhar. Honestly, now, yeah. we, we will be in bliss. We will be in joy. Our masters will sit, be sitting next to us and saying, don't worry, we are here. If anyone wants some en in energy, we'll give you. So, Ganga, the beautiful question, but yes, this is a fear for everyone, but let's not fear. We have come here to enjoy. We will enjoy. Sure, madam. Thank you so much. I got the meaning of that soul family and whole soul clan, everything. That picture is... That was so beautiful, beautiful Ganga, that, that picture. Yeah. I, I just love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still good, madam. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you Ganga. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Ma'am, Anuradha Agar would like to talk. Sure. Ma'am, you're on mute. Madam, session was excellent. Thank I'm so much. happy. I enjoyed your session like anything. I don't have any words to say, but uh, I love you. I love your Same session. Here, That's Same it. here. <laughs> thank you so much. Those those three words kind of gave me good feedback. And thank you so much for inviting me onto this platform and sharing all your love with us. We can see your love in your face, in your words, and in your energy. I'm so happy to be here, Anuradha. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Amma. Thank you, Andhra. Do we have any more questions? Please raise your hand. I think Deepika, there was some Deepika Y who raised her hand. I'm not sure. Uh, it was Deepthi, ma'am. Deepthi. Uh, okay, no worries. Anybody else, please raise your hand. I Otherwise, think we are good, ma'am. Yeah, we'll close the session there. Thank so, you. Thank uh, you so much, ma'am. Thank you. I just wanted to thank everyone before I hand it over back to you. I would like to thank Suresh Garu, Anuradha, Sai, and Swarnalata, Madam, everyone for giving this great platform to me. And this platform has become more or less like my home. I come every now and then. And, and so Sai, thank you very much. Um, this has been a great connection on this particular digital Swathya Yoga. I had a chance to participate in Telugu, Hindi, and now in English, and it's amazing. And Swapna, you are the best host I can ever have, and I just love you. So thank, thank you, you very much for your great hosting. Thanks, thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think the, the Deepika joined back. Deepika, you have a question? Yeah. If it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take her question, Deepika. Bye. Yeah. Deepika? Yeah. Okay, Deepika, unmute yourself. Deepika, can you please unmute? Yeah. Yeah, you can speak, Deepika. I think she got disconnected. Oh, yeah, she's here. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay. yes, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, Saroja, ma'am. Um, it Hi, was Deepika. a wonderful session. You? I'm good, very good, very good. So I was just uh, in a phase of, okay, um, uh, what is the next book I, I have to read? And then that's when you shared about this wonderful book. So thank you so much. And I know what, it, what is going to be my next book now. So um, yeah, as always, it was a great session. I just have, like, I need some more clarity on one particular part. Uh, you gave an example of uh, baking a cake and how uh, like you need to love yourself and praise yourself, right? So um, I totally agree with you. And I'm one of that person who always like, hey, this could be better. I could be better. And, um, and maybe that's one thing I need to work on. But at the same time, I also feel if I don't see, will I be clouded by my... Uh, uh, mistakes if I keep thinking okay whatever I do is right and how do I uh, get better at it yeah see there are two ways of handling it Deepika you can if you consider that it, it's a matter of terminology so if you're calling it mistakes then there are two ways either from you learn from your mistake or you can punish yourself for your mistakes Mistakes are not for punishing. If you call it mistakes, I would call it improvements. There is no standard that tells you that this is the perfect way. Who is the world to tell you that this thing has to be done only in this way? People think, think I'm headstrong, that's fine. It is their way of thinking, but I declare that there is no right or wrong way of doing anything in this world, in this life, and I truly believe it. My way is the best way for me. Well, as long as I don't interfere in others' lives, if I'm doing something that I'm happy with, then okay. But if I think that I can improve it further, for example, let's Deepika take the example of the cake we are baking. I wanted to bake a square cake and it's not so square. Well, if that is the expectation I had and if it has not met my expectation, that's fine. It's only improvement, don't call it a mistake. Start with changing your terminology because the moment you use negative words, the growth stops. I'm particularly using this because I have done umpteen sessions on negative emotions, negative words. This is how we go backwards, like we are stopping our own growth by using these negative words. Even if you wanted to bake a square cake, if it has come an oval, wow, be amazed and say, wow, what a wonderful thing came out. I never thought it would come like that. We have not been trained to do that. We have been 
slapped on the wrist and said, no, you do it right. Because of this word, don't get boxed in that Deepika. Your creativity, because your nature, the four principles of creation, never forget. They are you. They are your divine nature. And part of you is your creativity. If that gets hampered, then you are disabled. You don't want to be disabled. Come up with all the four. So the creativity will only come if you pat yourself on the back. If you keep telling that I'm doing mistake, I'm doing mistake. Where will the creativity come from, Mama? It will go in, go in the back door. That's why I'm saying, don't use the word mistake. There is no mistake. There's only learning. The whole life journey is about experiences. Even the su supreme consciousness, who we are part of, they're sending us and saying, go have fun, man. Free will. You know what is free will? Do whatever you want. We are not judging you. We are not branding you as good, bad. We are the ones who come into this physical dimension and start seeing everything in duality. There is no mistakes. As long as you do not interfere in others' lives. I keep clarifying this because people say, I can do anything. I can go and murder the next door neighbor. You don't interfere in others' lives, but do what you want. There is nothing right or wrong. Our free will to experience for what we have come. Enjoy life, do what you want, and let the creativity flow. Yeah, in fact, uh, the cake example just happened in our house. Like my daughter, 13 year old, she baked a cake uh, for my son's birthday last week. And it was a very delicious cake. But wow. again, wow. It, it didn't uh, get baked uh, in the middle. And she, we all were trying to tell her and she's like, no, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. So yeah. and when you just mentioned about that uh, cake example, I was like, OK, I yes, it didn't get baked in the middle, but it was delicious cake overall. And she's yeah. a 13 year old and she's yeah. still starting. Yeah. So. Deepika, very, very valid point you have raised today. Everyone who have children, please listen to what Deepika is saying. This is the problem with the current generation. They are self-critical, self-critical. Today, the teenagers are going through high rate of suicides. The only reason being the reasons are so flimsy. If someone like us look back and say, that was not even a worth reason for suicide. Why I'm mentioning is you have given a small example. That's where the whole thing starts. I have children at my place. I'm sure there are so many on this platform who have young children. They have become so critical. And small example, if the cake is not baked in the middle, it's not the end of the day, isn't it? But right. the children are being judged like that everywhere in school in the sports ground, in the music ground, at home, even by the parents. Critical, critical, critical. We have to change somewhere the whole humanity, Deepika. Let's be the ones who change it. Doesn't matter. Cake is not right in the middle. Let's cut that part, throw it away, let eat the rest. Yeah. Not the end of the day. You know what? This is Corona time. And not normally, um, I, I get stuck with most of the cooking. My husband helps sometimes in, on the weekend. But now, because everyone is at home, Friday night and Saturday night, today night happens to be, my son takes over, mom, I want to cook. You know, initially I was like, oh my God, he's going to cook, he's going to spoil the kitchen, it's going to take two hours for me to clean the kitchen. And then I said, guess what? I will do that cleaning tomorrow, but let him do it. He does amazing cooking. He won't do every day, but once in a while. And now I've started to enjoy and I'm thinking if I was always critical about his kitchen messing, when will they get the opportunity to do it? And this is how we are killing our children, suffocating them by being so harsh on them. And that's the cause of depression and anxiety in the current generation, Deepika. Such a great point, simple example of cake, but you have mentioned such a great thing, Amma. Thank you very much for bringing it up. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Deepika. Yes, ma'am, we are done with the questions now. I think we can close it. I'll give it over to you. You are the host and you can close the session. And Sapna, thank you very much once again, being very patient host. <laughs> and thank you very much, ma'am, once again. Thank you, sir. So friends, I hope you all got great insights into various topics today, how to make your life better and how to create happiness by following the four principles that madam has quoted from the book. So we are so fortunate and lucky that we have all these great masters who are collecting the spiritual nectar from all these books and 
giving it to us. We are just sitting and just hearing to them and they are doing all the work for us. And we are very blessed and fortunate. And Spiritual India team is also trying to take the responsibility of passing the knowledge of true, true spirituality obtained from various spiritual scientists and spiritual gurus from the world and making it available to everyone. So I request you all to subscribe to Spiritual India magazine, an effort by the Spiritual India team. And this magazine is the heartthrob magazine of Pyramid Spiritual Society's Moment India. Admin, can you please play the video about the magazine, please? you all got the details about whom to contact and to